Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. In the last one, we looked at the functionalities for updating and deleting our galleries. In this series, we're going to be looking at the image upload function of our gallery app. This will probably be the last of the series. This is the eighth one. So it's quite a lot of content to consume. If you've not seen any of it yet, here's your chance to go and start from video one through to this one. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss out on future tutorials on developing full stack applications with the Dart SDK. Let's get into it. On the homepage, I'm going to click add new. We're going to be looking at this file input and how we can upload our thumbnail. I'll come to our gallery model and over here I'd initially created this variable for storing a URL to the thumbnail but I am going to change that quickly just to say thumbnail for all of that and then in this to JSON method I'll also have the thumbnail here and then I'm gonna come to our gallery form template and in our gallery form template I'll come to where our file tag is and then I will add a listener. So this is a change event, which will run whenever we upload an image. And in here, we just want to run a method. We'll call it handle file upload. And in this function, we'll pass a reference to the uploaded file. So we can access this via event.target.files, which will give us a list of files. So I'll save that and then I'll go ahead and define this function in our gallery form component. So let's do that here. And in here, the parameter we expect is of type file list. And then we'll just say files. So what I'll do here is I'll log out this list of files. So at least we see what that looks like. And then when I select a file to upload and I look in the console, let's see what that gives us. Okay, we get this, which is a file list object. And in this file list, the first item is our uploaded file. All right. So what we're going to do here is essentially retrieve the first item from here, which will be our uploaded file and in fact to make things easier i can come over here and then i believe i can just do that which means that over here we get a file object instead so i'll save this and let's check this out in the browser upload an image and yeah there we go we get a file object Okay, so we'll just go with this one. So what we need to do is to figure out how exactly we're going to retrieve the contents of the file. And I've decided to take the path of least resistance in this one. So we will convert this file object into a base64 representation of was uploaded. I am going to come to our utils file. So we've got one go util for our publish date and I'll create another util which will handle the conversion of the file object to its base64 representation. So I'll create a function which will return a future of type string. We just call it generate base64. This will take in a file object and let's just import the dart html library and what we want to do is to create a reader object so this is a file reader and this file reader will essentially take in our file object and then we will be able to generate the base 64 string from it so what we'll do is we'll do reader dot unload which is a stream so we'll listen for that and then this stream gives us our file object which um, is essentially our processed file that has been passed into this file reader. So from here we can retrieve a reference to the loaded file and here we'll just do file.current target and we can cast this as a file reader object and then and then here we can do another console log and we'll load the files result. So we'll do loaded file.result. So in order to generate the base64 will do reader dot and then we'll invoke read as data url in which we are able to pass in our file object as such so let's save this and let's try this out so i'll come to our gallery form component let's import the utils dot dart file and then in here we can do generate base64 and we'll pass in our file object so i'll save this and let's check the browser okay so i upload a file 
and then this is what we get so this is the base 64 string from the uploaded file all right so that works for us although i've marked this function as expecting a future this file reader object does not support a future based interface out of the box so what we can do is we can use um we can use what's known as a completer class to wrap this function in a future based interface so let's do that now i'll create a completer object and then in order to use this we need to import the dart async library which has got this completer class and then we want to return the completers future so that means over here now we are able to complete this operation with the results from our loaded file so which means that this is now correct so i'll save that and let's test it out quickly we can do generate base 64 then with our result i'll just log got result and then the result yeah let's check that out so we got an error future dynamic should be future string you can just make this dynamic which should be fine let's try it one more time okay cool that gave us the result what we can do is we can assign this result to the thumbnail property on our gallery model now i should be able to do gallery.thumbnail equals result which means that in our gallery service when we're creating a new gallery and we convert our gallery model to json we also include our thumbnail in here so i can leave it as such and in fact let's test this out fully so i load this page i insert my first gallery i give it a date I give it a description and then we upload a file of course if i attempt to create a gallery and it's not going to go through because the server side has not been configured to receive the thumbnail so let's go do that now but at least we can confirm from the client side that the right information is being sent across okay so let me close some of these files and i'll come to our server side so under pg and the pg server i'll come to our gallery model and then in here i'll add a string to represent our thumbnail and then what i'll do is i will stop my server and then i need to run the aqueduct migrate tool i need to cd into the pg server directory because that's where our aqueduct app is and then run that command so aqueduct db generate but before i run it i need to make sure that the thumbnail is nullable so make sure nullable is true okay so let's go ahead and generate all right so we successfully generated a new migration file which will add the thumbnail column to our database table so if we look at migrations we've got this one here right now adding our thumbnail okay so next we'll apply that migration by running aqueduct db upgrade and then we'll set the connect flag we connect to postgres we'll set our username followed by our password and then it's to localhost 5435 and then our database which is which is this one photo gallery db i'll paste that in here so let's do that and I'm able to connect i think i got a port wrong i think it's 5432 okay cool there we go okay cool that looks good seems to have applied it let's go to our database and take a look so in our table now we now have this thumbnail column okay so that worked should be able to run the server again we can come to the browser and test this out and let me hit create and there we go so we made our post we sent our details across and it's been added in our database if i come to our database now and go to select data here you can see we have our first entry with the thumbnail all right so now let's come back to our client and let's try and display that thumbnail that we've just uploaded so we can come to our gallery list template and then over here for our source we can we can have the items thumbnail so let's check this out okay there we go here's our items thumbnail also what happens when we click edit okay so at this point let's display the thumbnail here when we click edit so at least the user can see that they've already uploaded a thumbnail okay so i'm gonna come to the gallery form template and then right before the submit or directly after this file i'll have a template with an ng if condition we're gonna check 
that the gallery has a thumbnail which is not empty so if the gallery has a thumbnail then we're just gonna display it in an image we'll set the source of that image to the gallery's thumbnail and also we'll give it a special class called material box so this is from the material css helper classes for images and then let's give it a width of 200 and the height should be set to auto okay so let's see what this gives us so if i reload we get that and i'll just put a breaker tag just to get some spacing and that should give us a bit of space and also because of the material box class we get this the cursor changes whenever we hover over this image so we can click on this image which will show the full sized image on the screen we've not done that yet so let's do that now but before i do that i'll show you what that looks like in the materialized documentation yeah so if we come to the material docs we see this example here when i click on it then it gives me the full sized image so let's see how we can do something similar we've done the first bit by adding the material box to class and then secondly we need to we need to interrupt with material box in it so let's do that i'll go to our js interrupt folder materialize and in here i will use the js annotation and then we want the material box in it i believe that's what it's called yeah uh, with a small b we'll make this external this will give us a material box instance and then we'll in it material box this takes in an element and it takes in a couple of options but for now i'll leave out the options and then let's create our material box class and then let's just test this out and then what we want to do is create a directive so i'll call it material box dot the logic will pretty much be similar to what we have with our date picker so i'll just copy this then i'll paste and then we'll just rename this to material box directive this gives us an instance of material box the selector is material box and then here i'm going to initialize a material box this currently doesn't take in any options uh, we don't have a destroy function yet but let's rename these variables to mbox and i'll name this to material box element i don't need this part and in here we just want to check these conditions are true and if so we'll render it uh, let's see in the docs if there is a destroy method okay there is so i'll come back to our materialize interrupt file and let's just add a destroy function i believe we need the external keyword okay so yeah that should get rid of the error and i should be able to just save this file and let's go to our gallery form template and then in here we are going to have our material box attribute so that will initialize the directive and then we want to specify our material box element which will be similar to what we've done with the date picker so if i come here um just do something like that so have a spy on this one so we'll say material box lm and then we should be able to pass it in here but then we'll do that and then i'll save that let me see briefly what we did with the date picker element yeah so we did something similar so that's essentially what we need to do here so i'll save all of that i'll come back to the browser okay i'm getting a server side error my mistake i need to import the directive so we'll import our material box directive and then we'll add it to our list of directives okay okay so that looks good if i hit on edit we get that when what happens when i click on this ah there we go okay so that works nice and then that goes back okay at this point it will be good to have the option of resetting or deleting a thumbnail that we've already added so like this one here so let's in fact do that now i'll come back to our gallery form template and then in here i'll add a button we'll make it gray and we'll say delete thumbnail and then what we're going to do here is on clicking this we can just invoke a method called delete thumbnail and let's define that method which will just involve setting the gallery's thumbnail to null 
So at this point, we'll come to the browser and we'll test it out. So we've got delete thumbnail. And when I click that, the gallery thumbnail disappears. Of course, it's still there. I refresh the page. And for some reason, this doesn't look accurate with the design. So I believe I need to add the BTN class and I'll move this up in here. Okay, so it looks like that. And I'll just space things up out a bit and i'll make the text black okay it's the other way around black text okay so that gives me that and now i should be able to just click it and i'll delete the thumbnail because if i reload it will come back because we've not persisted it to the back end so i'll delete that i'll save changes we've got our successfully updated gallery then i'll come to the home page we see no thumbnail here so why don't we bring back what was there previously if there isn't a thumbnail we can just show a placeholder image or else we show the actual thumbnail so we'll come back to our gallery list template in here and in fact i'll change this to that this looks much nicer and then here we'll have a template png if items thumbnail is not empty then we'll do this or else if it's empty or for some reason is set to null then we'll use a placeholder image here okay so let's try this out okay so it's failing because it says boolean expression must not be null so i'm assuming this is so i'm assuming this is evaluating to null okay so let's do it's not null and we'll say item dot thumbnail it's not empty or else if it's equal to null or if the thumbnail is empty then we'll show this instead okay so that looks good so if i go to edit and i upload an image we can hit save i'll come back to the home page then we see the uploaded thumbnail if i hit on edit and i delete the thumbnail and i save and i come back to the home page then we get the placeholder instead this is pretty much what i got time for i'll end the video here if you found it informative give it a thumbs up and also do share this video across your various social media channels if you are not a subscriber hit the subscribe button but not only that hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future updates if you've got any questions related to this video let me know down below and i'll see you in the next one